I sometimes look at vintage saws and I think how nicely shaped the handles are. And then I look at maybe a modern saw like this one, brand new, out of the packet. This is really a very good saw. It's a Spear and Jackson, it's newly made. Uh, it works really well. And the saw handle is fine. It's not uncomfortable to use, but it's not refined like the old handles. Like this one here is exactly the same saw but I reshaped it just a little bit and I wanted a, a method for doing it where you could keep the saw plate in the handle without taking it off and just go with the studs that you have holding it in place and everything. So I just worked on this one by hand and I want to do the same for you with this one to reshape this. So let's take a look at it because it's not complicated at all. It's a very simple strategy if I give you a few lines to work to, a few scallops here and there, what I'm going to do first of all, on my saw, I, I had a valley on the top of the saw. So in the middle of the saw handle hole, I'm just putting a line here. And then what I'm going to do is come down from the top, just roughly like this to create a valley on that point and then go sweep back up and then I want to take a, a line. Now I've got this line of the saw handle and I'm going to go somewhat compliant with it and I'm going to take a line there and a line on the bottom edge because we're going to put some scallops in here and this is what's going to help us to define the saw handle. So from the point of the bottom of the valley I've got about five eighths of an inch between the, the top of the hand hole and the, the bottom of the valley. And then this comes up and then it's going to sweep quite markedly down, almost like it's following the hole and it's got a slight curve on the top, a camber on the top. And then from that down valley, the bottom of this point here, we're going to come up with an arc and it's going to come round. This is going to remain the same here. We're not redefining there. So we come onto there and that gives me something of a shape. On this bottom part, I really go quite thin in here. So I'm trying to avoid being too near the saw plate. So I come up here, up about half an inch again. And then I come down in a sweep, but I'm going down and in, so I've only got about 3 16 of the handle left here and 3 16 left there. Inside here, I'm going to go a little bit deeper like this and like this down here. And that, so you'd be surprised, that makes this saw much more dynamic. And that's what we're talking about, making this saw more dynamic. We're taking this hard edge off here. We're leaving this one because that doesn't, that's not part of the grip. Taking the hard edges, hard edges, these come off and make it more oval and it's going to be very striking how different this is suddenly going to become. So what we'll do first of all, we can take the bulk of the meat out with a coping saw like this. to the top, that's great. And then we go down in here. We can go down with a, a vertical cut first into that internal corner. And then we go from here. And this just takes the bulk of the, the wood out. quite quickly. Now I've got my saw on the thrust cut, not on the pull cut. I find it much better. I, I get a lot more power on the push stroke than I do on the pull. <coughs> and that's just a question of loosening the blade, turning end for end, 
and you've got it on that push stroke. What do we do now? Let's take a look. Already we've got something of a shape there. I'm going to have to take a drink of water. And my next tool is going to be a small rasp. I've just got a small rasp in here. I'm going to avoid the studs because it does make it less uh, solid. But I'm going to go into the bottom, across the grain. <coughs> Excuse me. Over onto the top. Just fair it out so you get a nice even curve. Now we've got an example here that we're roughly following. We don't have to go exactly to this. And we come up this side to a point on the top. So I'm, I'm flipping between the flat face of my rasp and my round face. Then I'm going to come up here. I want it to follow the same round that I have on the top of here. Same onto this one, all the way in. It just looks really nice when I do it this way. And I follow the crown. That. Go the other side. A rasp does make it easier, but if you don't have a rasp, you can go with a coarse grit sandpaper. Where do I have that? On a round stick like this, just wrap the sandpaper around it and use this in there with a coarse grit. Maybe 80 grit would work and that will get you there quite quickly, not as fast as a rasp. Okay, I'm going to abandon that now. I'm going to go into this one. This is the flat face only, no, no round work here. Again, I'm working right from that tight corner there. So I'm going in with the corner of my rasp and then I work up, rounding the top with a crown on it again. And I'll turn this around and show you what we've got in a minute. So I'm pushing away from the corner, that internal corner, rounding over. Great, I've got another rasp here you might like, and this will do some of the work, not all of it. This is called a Shinto rasp. I've got quite a bit to take down on here, so... There's the coarse side, I'm on the coarse side. But don't let it rip into the wood. Work gradually and get that nice even curve on the top and then come up from the side like we did with the smaller rasp. And now you'll see, when I turn this around, you'll see how I've redefined the shape and it's much more elegant. It doesn't, now this won't affect the performance of the saw this particular part, some of it will and some of it won't, but it will look dynamic. So I'm going again with my coarse rasp. Carefully, don't press too hard if you've got one of these, go gently. Great. 
I've enjoyed doing my saws this way because it does, it does make them perform so much more dynamically and you feel better about it. The most important part is going to be right in the handle hole and surrounding the actual handle itself where your hand grips the wood. So that's the bulk of that down. I can go with a flat file on some of this, not all of it, right into this internal corner. I've got my file going over the top and working around like this. And this is going to remove a lot of additional sanding work. All of this, woo. That, there's not much I can do about the harmonics there. Just keep changing direction if it bothers you. Because I don't have the wood low enough in the vise. Let's try this way. Yeah, that works. And that gets me down into the corner. I'm looking for a crisp internal corner on that internal part. Right in there, I want it crisp and clean in this internal corner here. So that's what I've got. Turn it round, work from the opposite face. I'll go lower in the vise and see if I can. Sometimes I can and sometimes I can't. Very nice. This is wonderful work. This is great remedial work for customizing your saw handle. And you can do this, you don't have to buy a new saw. You can do this on old saws, on saws that are clunky and you're not satisfied with. If you get this vibration like this, you hear that? You get this little, these chatter marks in the surface. And that's because the wood is flexing away from the file. But we can take all of those chatter marks out in a minute and you'll see how. So I'm getting rid of all saw marks, any undulation left from the file, the rasp. Yeah, you can go back and forth on, on wood where you don't have to re-register the chisel. So I'm going back and forth with the chisel, uh, the, sorry, the file kept in place, which you wouldn't do on metal. So I just have that internal corner down here. This is where it gets a little bit more tricky because you've got grain to work with. I've got a small scraper and this just cuts away the surface fuzziness left by the rasp. Like that. Into the corner, pull in and pull. And there's some more refining to do on that. I can do that without you having to watch every single stroke of the scraper. But that basically has got the top shape. So I'm happy with this. I may do a little bit more refining. Let's see where we go inside here. Now let's do this bottom first and then we've done all the external shaving. Again, we can go with a small saw like this down into that sharp internal corner. Like that. And then we can also go with a chisel. Let me see if I and pull out a decent sized chisel. And what we'll do here, we can't go this way because the blade's in the way, but if I go this way, look for the, watch for the grain direction.
Okay, turn it round so I'm working with my dominant hand in the right direction. So this one we're going to go on the rise here, take off the bulk, I'm going with a, a quarter chisel width now, like that, and now shaking off. So I'm working on my curve. This is a little bit rounded on the underside again. And this is where I go to my rasp again. Yeah, try not to catch the saw plate on your rasp. Like I just did there. Into that corner, nice and crisp. I've got to take quite a bit off here, that round into the underside of the horn of the handle. And this is wonderful for teaching you grain direction so you can work with the grain in the right direction of the grain. See, I'm going very lightly here, up. So I've, this is basically roughing out. So I've roughed out what I need to here. Again, let's take a look. Can you see how this is getting the more dynamic shaping now? I turn it around, work from the opposite side. Take out the bulk with the heavier rasp. And you stand back and you look at it and you see if you like the shape you've got and if you've got a, an alternative shape in your mind, just start fashioning it to, to that shape you prefer. Constantly furring this out, as we call it, fairing it out, should I say. And that's my external shaping almost done. I have a little mix, a little bit to do in the handle itself. So the flat file works well for re uh, redefining everything, for refining those strokes. I'm not worried too much about the vibration because I can go with my scraper now and pull that very nicely. And then on this one too, even though I'm pulling against the grain, the scraper will work fine. This is a thin scraper, but almost any scraper will do. I've got another one here that will work just fine too. Into the corner, tight into the corner. And you can always refine that even more with a chisel if you want to. So that, we've seen enough of that. That's got the saw handle is coming nicely. Now I'm going to work inside this handle. It's a little bit difficult because we do have the saw nuts in there and they tend to be in the way. So I'm going in with my rasp in here. And I'm just going for it. I've got a half round here, taking it down. Not too much, but enough. And this, this hook I'm giving this, when you put your hand inside the handle, it completely transforms the, the feeling you get in the handle itself. There you go. So I'm coming up to the top. Here I'm switching to the camber so I've got the flat side. Same on this one, right into the corner. And this will make the handle feel like a hand inside a glove, only the opposite. 
how far you go is up to you. If you start rounding it like I'm doing here, you can start trying the hand uh, on the handle. Wonderful. And this will be like, this will be your saw, your hands are the different to mine, they're bigger, they're smaller. And remember when you're testing your handle, your hand in the handle, it's important to realize you only put three fingers, not four. You never put four, and this is the pointing finger. This gives direction to the saw. People don't realize that these days. So the handle is plenty big enough. If anything, it's too big. But this is really going to help it. Okay, I've got my scallop deeper. Now I'm, I'm casting my eye over it to see if it's graceful, if it's got a kind of elegant look to it. Okay, I'm going right over the top into this side and we're almost done with this scalloping bit. And this is where we start to change direction a little bit. Now this is looking a bit rough actually, but what we do, we got to bring this up in the vise. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because we don't have much wood, but I'm going this hard edge here on this side, I'm going to take the rasp here and start filing this away. And I'll show you in a minute. So I'm working into a round from a flat like this. And this is where I'm going with it. I'm going here. Just like that. In here I'm doing the same. So I'm using the round side of my rasp in here. In this one too. So you've got to watch this because this is like fighting with a barracuda because you've got all these sore teeth you're working with. How is that feeling? It's actually feeling very close to what I want. So I've got to do this one. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. How do you hold this? So what I'm going to just suggest is you open up your vise press down. Now you can anchor this to your bench top probably as well. I'm going to go which way? Here. Let's try this one and do it from your side. Nice and solid. And this is going to go in here. I'm going to work parallel to the, the name. I'm going to keep the name in the saw. I don't want to take it out. And that's how we get this saw defined to what we want, not to what the manufacturer wanted. Okay, so we're only going to do this edge. We don't need to do this top. We don't need to do the bottom. Our hand is only going to there. It's great. That's enough for that reshaping. We've got this one to do. Let me go on this end of the bench here and go on this side here. As I said, we can clamp this to the bench top as well. if we don't have enough hand arm strength in relation to the amount of pressure we're applying with the rasp. I feel like I'm doing great. Into, into the horn a little bit. 
And from this point, we're going to start going with the scraper. But already, this is feeling really very nice. So this is going to become my saw. Your saw is going to become your saw. How would you do that? I'm going to go here. I'm up here. I'm afraid you won't see as much this way. But I only have a little bit to do. If it's slipping, a little bit of shelf liner, silicone shelf liner will help greatly. Like that. So I'm taking this off at a, a 45 degree angle first into any part where my hand is, is going to be gripping the saw. Now I'm moving around to round it. Short jags here so the nose of my rasp doesn't hit the opposite wall of the hand hole. Now we'll see what we got. There we've got it again. It's feeling nice. A little bit more refining to do, scraping, things like this. I want to go with the grain as much as possible. So I take my scraper and flex it to task. Scrape it, scrape it, scrape it, scrape it up or scrape it down. And I start looking for the roundness I want. This scraper will bend and that takes out any flats that I want. I can use the edge of the scraper like this. And already I can see how that grain is becoming smoother, smoother, smoother the whole time. And I'm taking out those flats, those hard corners. Very nice. And I do that all the way around now. I go over this, keep going, keep going until I'm ready for sandpaper. And then I'll apply some finish after that. Let's do some of the top bit. Yeah, this in here, this is quite, this is amazing how quickly this scraper works, watch. Don't forget your file will work well on the uh, canvas as well. This works perfectly though. Can you see how smooth this has become? Beautiful. There's a special tool that I got here as well. See this, just a piece of dowel. This is three quarter inch dowel, piece of sandpaper glued to it. This works really well. But not too soon, don't go on using this too soon. Make sure you've used the scraper to the maximum amount you can because it cuts so much cleaner and sandpaper, sanding any faults in there won't usually remove them, it just sands them and makes them more ugly looking. So, scrape, file, and then sand. So this is looking beautiful in my eyes here. So we have a lot of this scraping to do. Probably another quarter of an hour of working on this will give me the saw handle I want. Oh, I love these scrapers. Work with the grain as much as you can. You'll feel it. If you're going against the grain, listen. 
Now listen. Completely different sound. So I'm working with the grain here, using that very pristine cutting edge, which is the most complex cutting edge in woodworking. So I'm working on here because why am I spending so much time on here? This is where my hand is going to be gripping this saw maybe for a few hours a week or a few hours a day even sometimes. I want it to be right, I want it to be mine. It's going to be my saw for my use and I want it to fit my hand. Very nice. So that's basically getting the shape. It's conforming to my hand. It's exactly what I want. I've got some more scraping, some sanding, things like that to do. Apply a couple of coats of shellac, buff it out with steel wool, some furniture polish, and I will have a saw handle that looks just like this one. Thank <laughs> you. 